what is that thing that influencers do? My first Cartel Dawn plants. I am so super excited to film today because if you have watched any of my old Anthurium videos before, you will know how big of a fan I am of Cartel Dawn, which, by the way, I think is not pronounced that way. I think it's pronounced something, something in the ballpark of Cartel Down. But I'm not going to say that because I'm not even 100% sure. So until I get coaching from an actual Indonesian person, I don't want to butcher the name <laughs> by trying to say it correctly. So I'm going to keep saying Cartel Don, but just so you know, that's not like the actual pronunciation. Anyways, I am such a big fan of what they do. And I've said it before, I don't think that Indonesian anthuriums get the respect that they deserve, except maybe now they do. And I feel like a lot of that is attributable to Cartel Dawn. Before, people really didn't give Indonesian anthuriums the time of day because I think it's because um, there's just a lot of mystery surrounding like the actual lineage of plants and things like that. And it's just kind of like this genetic soup, right? You just, you just have plants that look a certain way, but you're not sure on what the actual parentage is. However, there are like gems, little nuggets of like flavor within the genetic soup that I just think is so unique to Indonesia. Two of my most favorite plants in my entire collection are like Indo specials. So you guys know my favorite anthurium or my favorite plant in my whole collection is my dark phoenix, right? That's an Indonesian anthurium. My king of spades, the HU, also from Indonesia. So I'm just really, really happy to see like all the work that they've done, the marketing, just like the, the cleverness behind what they do has really put a really positive spotlight on Indonesian plants and like anthuriums in particular. So if you don't know Cartel Don, they are a company based in Indonesia that just pretty much <laughs> almost exclusively deals in anthuriums and not all of them are like their own hybrids. From what I gather, um, they've kind of <laughs> selected a lot of cool anthuriums and cool cultivars within Indonesia and put them into the breeding program. They've also brought in plants from the States and kind of put them into this breeding program. So I feel like it's quite unique in a way and they just were able to get it in front of a lot of people. And I just really, really appreciate what they've done for the plant community in that sense. So when Eric messaged me and asked if he could send me a box of plants, I was like, yes, please, thank you. And it's finally here. I have no idea what is in this box. So we're gonna unbox these. I don't know what the plants are and they're not gonna be labeled. He told me that already that they don't have the names on them. So what I meant to do is take pictures of them, send them to him and he'll tell me what it is. I think it's something to do with customs clearance or something like that, but I think it'll be kind of fun to guess what it is. And what I'll do is I'll put in text down here what the actual ID is after I find out. So even if what I'm saying is not the correct ID, the text tells the truth. So I ho hopefully that's not gonna be super um, confusing, but I do wanna, I do think it's gonna be fun to make a little bit of a guess. So this video is gonna be broken up into two parts. So the first part is here now, unboxing, um, potting them up, and we're gonna unwrap the roots and get it into like a rooting medium and then Later, I want to do a one week update on how these plants do. You know, with imports, things can still go drastically wrong after the one week mark, but um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that there's going to be some root growth and stuff like that. So this box has been in transit, I think for about a week. If the dates that I was told are correct and there weren't like any delays. So Cartel Dawn does, um, partner with certain importers in certain select countries. So definitely in Canada, obviously, because that's where I am and in the States and parts of Europe, I think. So they import the plant and then they ship it on to its final destination. So I didn't need an import permit for this. This tissue paper is too precious. I don't think that's from Cartel Don. I think this is from the, the Canadian um, importer. So yeah, if you're, if you're based in, I'm pretty sure all of the EU, I might be wrong, but also the UK, Canada, US, you can import it without an Indonesian import license. But that said, I don't know if um, the plants were like unwrapped in Canada and then repackaged. So I'm going to assume that it's been in transit or like been in the way in its packaging for a week. I'm seeing a lot of polyfill. 
just so you guys get a sense of how things are packaged. And I'm gonna save this polyfill for Lauren because she uses hella, oh my gosh, there's like, holy crap. Okay, this is way more plants than I was expecting, but there's like five plants in here. So I'm just grabbing them at random because I have no idea what they are. This is how it's packaged. That's the Cartel Dawn sticker, my name, and a tag, which I can print a label here for it later and just stick that into the slow trip. It's gonna be so cute. I really like their logo, by the way. It just, this little old man and Ethereum, it's so cute. This week has been a whirlwind of emotion. This has been like some, some horrible things happened and then some amazing things happened. I just, it's just never ending excitement. This paper is kind of like, not that it really matters, but it's not like um, the really dry, fibery paper. It's like kind of got a bit of a shine to it, which I think doesn't really absorb so much moisture. I'm trying to play it cool, but I am, I'm just gagging on the inside right now. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. Okay, so my initial guess is that this is some sort of red crystal hybrid. Maybe? Is it? Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Look at this venation. It's a little bit, um, this is the oldest leaf. So this is like the saddest looking leaf, the two newer leaves. Like these, they're, they still got a good amount of water um, in them, but this is so cool. This little mustache thing, and there's a new leaf. Oh, it's so precious. <sighs> I'm overwhelmed already. Okay, next one is a little bit smaller. The, the rest of them are kind of like this size. I think I've done an unboxing on camera since like my first year on YouTube when I was doing a tropicals unboxing. I think that was the first and only time I ever did an unboxing and I should do this more often because it's really really fun but also it's kind of like you know the feeling when you're opening a birthday present and everyone's just like watching you like is she gonna like it? She's gonna like it? So even if you do really like it you're, you're you're overthinking your reaction so much that maybe you come across like you're not so excited oh my gosh this one has new leaf too okay so it, it has it has like polyfill all in between the leaves which is oh there's new roots it's been rooting in transit what are you there's this guy this looks like I, knowing what I know about what they're breeding, I can only think that it's red crystal something. But what? Red crystal what? It's so cute, but look at, I know it's like a lot more juvenile than this one, but what could it be? Could they be the same thing? They can't be the same thing. I don't think he was sending you two the same thing, but what is it? I don't even have a guess for this one. I guess by now you guys already know, but I have no idea what this is. Third one. I just want this to go on and on and on. I don't even care. I wish I could do other people's unboxing for them. What are you? What the heck? Okay, so this one has, I wanna say Dark Phoenix vibe. But this leaf is giving a little bit dark phoenix. Do you know what I mean? Very curious what this one is. Oh, you're so cute. You're so freaking cute, I can't stand it. Oh my gosh, this one has a new leaf as well. Wait, <laughs> look at this leaf, oh my gosh. It's coming off a little shinier and lighter green. Okay, there. <sighs> What gives you the right to be so cute? 
What are you? Okay, I think maybe this is something crossed with Indoport. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I right? Am I wrong? I'm probably wrong. <laughs> okay, last one, right? Yes, last one. This packaging is like just chef's kiss. I think the only person that I can think of that packs better than this is Amanda. Like she packs like a mother -fucker. She has like these like corrugated card cardboard tubes that she like sticks the plant in and she fills it with polyfill. Like that plant is not touching anything that it's not meant to touch. But this is like, there's polyfill in and around the leaves. The root ball is like wrapped quite tight. So it's not um, like the moisture is really staying in there. It's just very neatly packaged. And the paper I think is helpful because it has a little bit of a shine to it. So it's not as absorbent. The paper that like Tropicals uses, which is like understandable because there's such a huge, huge operation, but it's like really thin and very just papery. Like it just absorbs all the moisture. So if you're shipping in uh, hotter months, then um, that uh, paper really absorbs all of the moisture and then therefore the moss tends to come in quite dry. Wait, is this a dark phoenix? This one has a new leaf as well. Look, I think this is a dark phoenix. Is it? Wait. The, the other one that I thought had Dark Phoenix in it is this one. But this one, hello, looks like a Dark Phoenix. Right? I Like the light, my softbox is making this look really, really washed out. It does look darker in person. It's not like a super, super dark, like blackish dark yet. But it does look a little bit darker in person. And I'm almost positive this is a Dark Phoenix. You guys are just like here watching me look at like an idiot because you already know the ID, but I'm just, hmm. Well, anyways, since I did not come prepared, I don't have my substrates here with me. So I'm gonna go grab that from downstairs and we're gonna unwrap the root balls, pot these bad boys up. Be right back. I brought some substrate options. Oh, look. <laughs> Well, maybe you can't see. My potting mat is filthy. It's been a busy time, okay? So I have brought my pond mix, which right now my pond mix currently in this box is like a very, it's a mishmash. It's Lechuza Pond, there's coarse perlite with some like finer grade perlite. I ended up buying like a perlite that wasn't as like heavily sifted as what I normally buy, which is like a very uniform coarse size. So there's like kind of varying grain size pieces in that perlite. Um, there's a little bit of orchiata, but I'm running extremely low. So there's less orchiata than I normally do. And there's like random like party pond, which is um, from the variegated plant shop, I think, which was gifted to me by Charmaine. So I have either that or I have my tree fern fiber that's mixed with perlite and pond. And um, I think I want to do no drainage because I know I'm going to be really busy the next few weeks. And I want to be able to keep a reservoir on these. I didn't want to put it into like a drainage pot and need to keep on top of the watering. So if I do no drainage with tree fern, I will have a Leka layer on the bottom, which would be this Leka that I got from Lauren. It's the like Topi Cocoa Puff Leka, which I'm kind of leaning towards, but sometimes Sometimes I just want options and sometimes my heart will just decide something in the spur of the moment. And um, for the pots, I'm using no drainage. This is like one of the most commonly asked questions I get, like where do I get these cups from? And I can't tell you where to get them from because even I don't know where to get them from. I got them from um, my old workplace because this used to be a yogurt parfait cup. So it used to have this like dome lid on top and like a little separator that you put the granola in. And then like the, the parfait was getting discontinued. So like there was no more use for this cup. Long story short, they were getting out of this cup. I salvaged like a whole bunch of this. And once I use them all up, I don't know where I'm gonna get them from. Anyways, nobody asked this time. I messaged Eric, but it's like the middle of the night there on a weekend. So I don't expect to get an answer anytime soon, 
but he told me to send him pictures once I open the plant and he'll tell me what the idea is. Actually, I don't know if there's tape on here, so maybe I don't need, need scissors. Yeah, so in the spur of the moment, I was just randomly guessing based on what I knew of what he had, but there were some plants that I forgot that he had um, that were part of his breeding program. So I'm, I'm thinking I have different thoughts on what the IDs on these plants are. Not that it matters because by this point you already know what the ID is, but very nice roots, by the way. I, I just want to keep guessing um, just for fun so you guys can tell me how stupid I am. I think this might be like, uh, maybe not that one. Maybe, maybe this one I think is maybe like blue pap something blue pap dark phoenix maybe and then i had i had different thoughts so these two are really confusing to me the very silver ones so i forgot about this plant actually this this one that like he calls like king crystallinum not that this is definitely the id but he does have a plant called king crystallinum that looks a lot like this or he also calls it minahasa but then this one looks so similar so I'm assuming they are different plants because why would he send me to the same plant? But I don't know what this is. But I think one of these and maybe this bigger one is the King Crystalline Minahasa one. And that's as far as I got on the IDs. Okay. Do I want to do pun or tree fern? Let's let's do the tree fern like a combo. Maybe this big one I'll put into pun. Why? I don't know. The only trouble with these like these cups is that it's quite wide and it's I know it's very cute that it's rounded at the bottom, but if you put this cup on a wire shelf, it has a tendency to like slip through the through the wire shelving. When I transitioned a lot of these seedlings from this cup into like a cylindrical glass vessel or even the square ones, they stopped falling. It was so good, but it is a really nice size. Oh crap, I just broke a root. Dang it. I'm just extending, I don't know if you can see it, I'm just extending the roots to the sides of the vessel so when there are, is new root growth, I can see it a little sooner and also the plant will sit a little bit lower. Can you see? No, you can't. Hold on. So I don't know if you guys ever like go on your subscriptions page. Well, if you're subscribed to me, first of all, you, you would see this, but if you're not, then you wouldn't see this. But if you go on the community or your subscription page, rather, sometimes you can see like the community posts that like I or other people you're subscribed to posts. So if you didn't see this, um, when I referred earlier to like this emotional roller coaster I'm on this week. So my computer freaking, it's its in bad shape right now. I don't know why. So I'm in the middle of editing last week's video. So that would have been the one where we talked about quitting our jobs. That was the video with Charmaine. And um, I was in the middle of editing that and I didn't even get very far, but I turned on my computer one night to edit and then it had like restarted because of a problem, right? So that's nothing like, you know, super crazy. I'm sure that has happened to me before. Maybe not on that computer, but on uh, another laptop. <sighs> um, so I rebooted it and it just wouldn't reboot. It was just like stuck on that like Apple, Apple like rebooting screen. And that bar where it's like progressing the reboot was just not moving. So I ended up just like doing a hard shut off of it and then turn it back on. And then when I turned it back on, the screen was just like white, like kind of not really full white, but like pixelated white vertical stripes. And my heart just like dropped into the pit of my stomach. I have not been able to reboot it since then. I brought it to the Apple store. I was like, is it because it's in a window and it's getting some sunlight on it? Like, did I cause like heat damage internally? And like he ran some like diagnostics on the internals and like everything was coming up green check marks. So he was, they were saying that like, it's probably like needing a replacement of, wait, hold on, pause. While I show you the roots, 
really, really healthy. It's obviously been like treated to pass phytosanitary inspection, but there's just a small bit of secondary root to kind of die off, <laughs> die off. So I'm just pulling that off. Anyways, back to my story. They recommend replacing the display, which is going to cost me, what they say? Including tax and everything, it's like $700 and they don't even keep the part on hand. So I have to wait for them to get the part in stock and then schedule another appointment. And then I don't know, you know how many days it takes for them to diagnose the issue. Oh wait, no, I need Lekka in here. Meanwhile, I have a laptop, but it's like a very old laptop. I got it in 2015 or 16. I don't remember. It's a MacBook Pro, but it's a very old one and it's not a very powerful one. There's no way I can run Final Cut Pro on that. So I don't even know when I'm going to be able to get another video up, which is like stressful beyond belief because like at this point I do um, rely on my YouTube revenue more than I did before. It's almost like, um, you know, similar to when I had a big power outage for like two days. This was like, I don't know, six months ago or something like that. No, maybe less time than that, but I had to miss an upload day because of that or like it was really delayed. So if I'm gonna just, you know, think on the bright side, what I could do with this like kind of time I've been gifted is to film ahead and get ahead on YouTube, which is probably a good thing considering that I might have um, some projects or, or like my work may, if I'm lucky, it may be getting busier in the near future. I'm also like really just feeling a bit anxious in general about the video I'm about to edit and upload anyways because I just wanted to get it done just so I can like look it over and see how I feel about it because it is that podcasty video that I filmed with Charmaine about quitting our jobs. I remember when I when we filmed I remember saying a lot of things that I was just kind of like on the fence about like am I allowed to say this stuff am I am I gonna get in trouble for saying this kind of stuff and um, so I was already quite anxious about getting that one edited but also at the same time I was like there's like been such highs of this week as well. I don't, why do I keep picking up my scissors? I don't need my scissors. Like, um, what's it called? Our Discord server went live this week. We've been sitting on it for so long. Um, and I really didn't expect for so many people to join straight off the bat. Not that I had any like real reason to have str a strong opinion on what to expect of this Discord server because I'm such a Discord noob, so I didn't really expect a ton of people to have Discord, be interested in Discord. So within a couple days, like so many of you had joined and I was like so excited. Well, this route is broken, but otherwise quite healthy. This is the, the other one that I don't know the name of. So that's been so exciting because like when we kind of launched it or when we talked about it in the video we kind of talked about it in my video and her video it's kind of all spread out throughout the place but we were talking about our reasons for wanting to create a discord server in the first place and the main thing that really drove us to want to create a discord server is how many people tell us that they wish that they could find plant friends and their friends aren't interested in plants and like they they wish that they had the kind of pl plant friendships that we have which when we hear that kind of thing wait this is falling off it's just so heartbreaking because we know how much plant friendships have um have changed our lives for the better so that was one thing I personally had no idea what Discord was used for, how it was used, and like what the experience was like, but um, we kind of took the advice of um, Charmaine's sister who either uses Discord or is young enough to understand Discord, and we made the server and then we just kind of sat on it for a while. And for no good reason, we just didn't, we just didn't tell anyone about it. We didn't use it ourselves either. We just set up the channels and just kind of like, it just sat there. <laughs> doing nothing 
And um, when we told you guys about it, like so many people joined right away. And then just like the chatter is just, it's just so lively in there. I can see people like starting to, <laughs> I feel like, um, like, like a, like a date chaperone, but I'm just like watching you guys talk and um, be so kind to one another and be so excited for one another for new growth and like asking each other's questions and helping each other out. And it's just, I, I'm just in shock that it is already turning out to be exactly what we wanted it to be, which is like just us bringing our our subscribers together in such a way that you have a place to hang out with each other that's not facebook or instagram it's no sales so we do not allow sales on our server it's really just because like sales and trades actually we we don't allow trading either because you know when these things go south woo, it's kind of inve inevitable that it will go south, like a bad deal or a dead plant or whatever. We do not want that to take place on our server because I don't think that we have the, the capacity and the time to police that kind of thing and moderate that kind of thing. And also, we also don't want to be a place to attract people who are purely there to sell and trade or scam, like God forbid. So that is one thing that will not take place on our server like if you want to sell stuff or if you have stuff people are interested in go ahead like just do it do it on a different platform but that's definitely been like one of the highs of this week which is like seeing that our vision has come to life and maybe it was always meant to be that way because that's just how discord is like if you know how to use discord you, it, you naturally just form this community and it's like um, easy to keep it active. I don't know. Maybe that's just a normal thing. But to me, being a total Discord noob, I was not expecting it to just like immediately become such a party. <laughs> so that's been really nice to see. And like I've been trying to keep a little bit more to the background and allow people just to kind of bond on their own. And I think Charmaine's been doing the same thing. I would just be so incredibly thrilled if there's another Alvin out there and he or she or they found their own Sherman and <laughs> they lived happily ever after. Okay, this has to be Dark Phoenix, right? It just has to be. I don't know what else it could be. Dark Phoenix self, right? I really only have the leaf to go by. The, the petiole is, is quite round with like a slight ridge down the back um, and like a bit of redness in the stem and an emergent leaf. That all says Dark Phoenix to me, but it is still young, so young. It looks quite small for this cup, but that's fine. I have faith in anthuriums. I've certainly put a much smaller plant into an even less appropriate size vessel, so. I guess like in the grand scheme of things, there was only one bad thing that happened this week. It just happened to be quite a devastating thing, like my computer breaking. Um, Cause that just kind of threw, threw everything off the rails for a second or until it, um, until the unknown mystery time that it will get resolved at the unknown mystery price. But everything else has been so great this week. We spent two days at the shop this week because this is the last week that Lauren is on vacation. Was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday that we were at the shop and we just had the best day ever. Me, Charmaine and Anna were all at the shop, which rarely ever happens that all three of us are at the shop. And I felt like just so productive. You know, it was kind of like a shop maintenance day. Make sure the imports are watered and like check on them make sure that lauren's personal plants are watered and also um oh my gosh wait i'll come back to that story in a second if this is indeed dark phoenix it should go in pawn yeah we're gonna put this thing in pawn maybe let's do a little mecha layer as well because why not yeah, so the first part of the day we had to get like the shop business taken care of. Cutting up 
plans to put in her prop bins. And then the second half of the day was my favorite, which is deep cleaning the shop. There's a lot of stuff that we, that's like difficult to get around when like the shop is in like full swing, when like we're doing restocks and things like that. So it's like, it's never like the right time to do um, a deep clean. Um, so we were like, this is the perfect time to do some deep cleaning and just reorganizing. And like, oh, I was just on such a high yesterday from the cleaning, despite, um, knowing that my computer was dead, I still had a great day. I had this like kind of a little bit of a black cloud looming over me, but this is the plant by the way. I had a bit of a black cloud looming over me, but just nothing could stop me. I was just, oh, I was so happy. And I almost wish that I took photos. Another little mini planty life update is that um, I've decided to like go really hard on decluttering because well, you you will you guys will find out soon enough but there's a reason why I need to do heavy decluttering and I've decided I'm going to be letting go of like a lot of plants like the full plant I'm not even gonna just do cuttings I'm just gonna sell the whole plant either at the live sale or maybe on the website if it's not a very exciting plant and that's part of the reason why this room is such a pigsty right now because like I move things around I pull things out of the tent I'm just pulling off some dead roots you can see some of the tiny secondary roots are a little bit brown there's like you know some here and there as much as I think that like my current obsession with anthuriums is like somewhat of a phase in the sense that I don't think I'm only gonna purely be interested in anthuriums forever but if the plant hasn't been bringing me joy for like upwards of a year and it's just a plant that I've been keeping alive and it's just taking up space, then I'm gonna get rid of it like big time. And I'm going to be quite savage about it just cause like I, I'm not gonna fully stop getting plants, right? But the only plants that I'm getting these days are anthurians and I do enjoy growing them in my tent. And it, there are plants taking up space in my tent and in my plant room in general that don't need to be here because I don't really love them and I haven't loved them and I don't see myself loving them even if they're like nursed back to health or like looking really great and thriving like you know how there are some plants in your collection that maybe don't look its best and don't bring you a lot of joy right now but you know that at one point in the future when you do nurse it back to health and it's healthy and it's growing big leaves and stuff like that you will get the joy um, that you'd hope to get from it and that's why you bought it in the first place there's like a reason to hold on to those plants but there are also plants that like even when they're looking great they don't bring you much joy those are the plants that i'm getting rid of like for example this is totally off topic but my philodendron linamii it's a healthy plant i guess it's just philodendrons in general like i only have space in my heart for so many and um that one just like it was fun to grow but i don't think i need it anymore you know okay so let's decide what to put this one in it's just this thing is so pretty you guys like this leaf holy crap i just i just love these like really bold silver crystallinum type things and i can see that it was grown by cutting so this is the chunk that i came off of everything else i think has been grown from seed and I think I read somewhere that the the Minahasa or King Crystallinum, if this is indeed what that is, I read that this is only reproduced by, by cutting. So pretty sure that that's what this plant is. So a bigger root system. Let us do pond. Now what cup should we do? Let's... I want to do something cuter. Oh, I have a glass vessel. Should I do the Lekka layer again? Yes. This Lekka is just too fun. I want to use it on everything. I like it so much. I 
I really hope that this new leaf, this little guy here, will form properly. That would be really nice if it did. When I pot um, anthuriums up, I try to not like, if possible, try to not sit it too high in the vessel because as it grows, I want to be able to like add more substrate to it rather than repot the whole thing if I don't need to so that it can continue rooting at the upper part of the stem. So if I can like kind of spread the root system out a little bit wider so that the plant can sit, sit its ass down a little bit lower, then I would do that. So this is not like the best example, but you can see that I've buried the stem. <laughs> can you see? There's substrate up to like the base of the petioles right now, but when it gets a little bit taller after like, I don't know, two more leaves, the stem is going to be above the substrate and it's going to be try to, trying to push out roots from there. And if the um, humidity is high enough, then it will successfully root out and down into the to the substrate where it's searching for water. But I have a little bit more, more, um, just a little bit, but a little bit more space to add a little bit more substrate to kind of guide those roots along. So that's the big guy. Just to recap, this is the, what I think is some sort of Indoport hybrid. This other, maybe Dark Phoenix hybrid. This possibly Dark Phoenix, which if it is, then I have two Dark Phoenixes from different growers, I think. Maybe this one, this one was grown from seed. I could tell by the, the tininess of the stem. And then this mystery guy, which is so pretty. Um, the newest leaf is a little bit crisped off on the tip. It'll form somewhat, but it's not gonna form like perfectly. And the last step is to get these inoculated with great white, which again, <laughs> I did not prepare, so I'm gonna be right back again. Okay, I'm back. You got my great white water mixed up. One thing I forgot to say is, if you're new to tree fern fiber, new to no drainage, um, or especially both, <laughs> tree fern fiber and no drainage, then I really highly recommend that Lecca layer because with something so small, it's really easy to put too much water in. And if, for example, it was just pawn or just Leka, it's really easy to like hold the substrate and like tip it out. But because tree fern fiber is a little bit more absorbent, it's harder to squeeze out the excess water. So this is a good little like insurance, I guess. But also if your substrate is like bone dry to begin with, just know that some of the water will move into the substrate. So even if it looks like there's like a big puddle at the bottom, but all of this is like hydrophobic soil that hasn't absorbed that water yet, just know that that reservoir is gonna be pretty much gone in a couple hours. So I think the best way to like kind of gauge whether or not you've over or under or given it the adequate amount of water is to like feel the weight of the container before and after watering. So everything has gotten some mushroom water. So what is going to happen with these now is they're going to go live in my tent. I'll show you um, the setup next time I come back, which is gonna be in a week when we do the one week update and how it's going, what kind of light they're receiving. But I'm pretty confident in like the setup in my tent. That is a good place to root anthuriums. Anthuriums like humid and they like some temperature drops at night. I've seen people who grow absolutely massive anthuriums who get quite cold evenings or like the place that the plants are living like get quite cold at night but it's quite humid and the anthuriums seem to really absolutely love that and they also do really well in high humidity yet constantly warm which is what um, the shop is pretty much like. It's always quite warm and very humid but one thing they do not like is warm and dry. I actually think they even prefer cold and dry to hot and dry. So yeah, they're gonna go into the tent for the next week and we'll see you in a week for the one week update. Okay, bye. So it's been exactly one week. Don't look at the pimple on my forehead. Don't.
In that time, I've cleaned my plant room. Look how much tidier it looks. I chopped so many leaves off, which I didn't film. I'm sorry, but it's not what we're here for today. I just wanted you guys to see how much nicer it looks since the last time I was on camera. Anyways, we are here to look at how the plants have been doing in the last week. Um, I haven't looked at them for the past few days. I was keeping a close eye on them in the beginning, in the first half of the week, just to see if there was like any decline, anything just like doing really horribly, any severe rot or anything. In those days, everything is going peachy, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna leave it for a few days and come back and we'll look at it together. So right after I um, finished filming the last segment, Eric, I guess he was up for the day and then he was answering my questions on the IDs and <laughs> I feel so stupid um, at what I was guessing. I mean, some of them I got kind of right-ish, but I really wasn't expecting these plants, so Honestly, I was a little bit overwhelmed with gratitude. I'm just gonna quickly show you um, with my phone what I have them set up in. So this is the right side of my tent and I have this bar here. I really just put this here for propagations, but it's turning out to be a really good little acclimation corner. So this is a 10 watt Barina, one of the T5s. And I have also a bar here in the corner that's pointing diagonally this way but most of the light is coming from here for these plants and they're just here. So you already got a bit of a sneak peek on each plant. So that's what I have them acclimating in. And the humidity in the tent is something like 90%, 80%, you know, obviously depends on the time of the year. I'm just gonna pull the plants at random. So this one is the Dark Phoenix by Ralph Lynham Fort Sherman. I thought he sent me a, a plain Dark Phoenix, which I was actually already really happy about, even though it would be a duplicate, but I think that like different Dark Phoenixes look quite different, especially if it's grown from seed. So I was really excited for that, but to know that it was crossed with the Papilla laminum is like even more exciting. It's gonna be so dark and so sinister looking. I am so excited, but right now it looks very much just like a Dark Phoenix. The new leaf, is slowly growing. So this is one of the only two that I planted in pond. Looking at the roots, I don't see new root growth, but I do see old root that is like fine. I don't see any rot whatsoever. And it's like super bouncy, perky, looking, looking good. It's looking good. I would have been thrilled to see new root growth, but honestly, this is like, pretty much as good as I would have hoped. You can see like even the tiniest baby leaves have held on. They haven't rapidly yellowed, which can happen really, really quickly with seedlings when there's like stress or like even slightly underwatered. Oh, actually there is new root growth. Can you see right there? It doesn't want to focus on the root, but right here there's a new root popping out. This is actually one that I am like extremely excited about. I also printed up some labels to put on his labels. This one is the King of Spades or HU crossed with a red crystallinum. I don't know um, the origins of his red crystallinum. So there's that. I'm just pulling some polyfill off. Do we have root growth? No visible roots in the substrate, but up top, I'm not sure if there's, ah! Maybe one or two of them. Um, I do think that it is starting though, like near to the top of the stem. This one had an, the most developed emergent leaf at the time and it had a little bit of a crispy tip, but the rest of the leaf is forming nicely and it's it. this plant is going to be so beautiful. I am so stinking excited to grow this one big because I think it's gonna be so beautiful, so red, two plants that have the ability to show a lot of color. The potential for King of Spades to be like really bleedy and coupled with like the kind of messy little like speckly silver that Red Crystallinum tends to have. I really appreciate when it doesn't have just like a very clean silver and it's kind of got like silver kind of splash throughout the leaf. I think that is just like the coolest looking pattern. So yeah, this um, setup looks to be fine for the plant. It's able to keep growing. And again, this one is super perky. 
<laughs> I'm so excited for this one, guys. I can't even tell you. Okay, this one is Bigfoot crossed with blue pap. Bigfoot was one of the plants I'd put in my um, anthemes to put on your wish list. Indonesian edition video that I posted a few months ago. I'll link in the description. Bigfoot is, I think for me, a very close second to Basilisk. Basilisk is like one of my top, top wish list anthuriums at the moment. I don't think that Eric is going to be selling a cutting of it anytime soon, but it, when he does, I really want it. But I think there are a lot of people that really want it. And then Bigfoot is not quite as like, intense as a basilisk it doesn't have like the ruffles it doesn't have like the wide sinus but it does have the really cool like webby sinister looking venation so i'm really curious if any of that's going to come out because right now this plant is very 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 minimal in the venation and it's quite green there is a tiny bit of root death here which is pretty much I, I probably should have removed those secondary roots to begin with. I don't know why I didn't, but um, the primary roots I can see here are still healthy. I just don't see any new root growth just yet. And I haven't watered it in the last week and it's still a little bit damp. So I don't know if it's like a little bit damper than it wants to be, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to leave it be. Um, this one also is really perky. Now I'm going to have to look back on my footage to, to see if I captured how far along this like new leaf was i i, I want to say it's a little bit more swollen and a little bit more ready like in any case the plants are doing stuff but yeah this one i think will also be a really a really really stunning plant it's not at all what i would have expected this cross to look like it looks well pap is quite dominant in in its traits so i'm not super surprised that it's very like pap leaning but i would have expected more silver maybe it will come out more um in future leaves yeah who knows so that one also doing great okay i don't even remember what i thought this plant was this one is the blue pap crossed with fort sherman which is going to be stunning like the elongated super narrowness of this leaf is very exciting for me i feel like blue pap is probably very variable because it's like a some sort of unknown hybrid right but fort sherman is super elongated very sinister looking and when it's this narrow um at such a young age i have really high hopes for what it'll look like and it has popped a new leaf, can you see it? There. New roots. Nope. Oh, actually, new roots up here. Don't know what's happening in here, but there are new roots, this one. I sound like a broken record, but I'm also really excited to see what this one's gonna look like. Yeah. I've never seen a blue pap in person, so I don't know what the texture is like. I've also never seen a Fort Sherman in person. I kind of picture both of them to have like not really thin leaves, kind of similar to if you've ever had a dark phoenix, that's the only one I can think of, or like a crystallinum. Not really pliable, not really soft. Um, at this age, it's really impossible to tell what the texture is going to become because when it's younger, it tends to be a little bit less velvety than what it can be when it's a little bit more mature. I was so excited to have like a new kind of generation of seedlings to look after because I have no idea what they're going to look like. But also like so many of my seedlings are like this intermediate meat, like close to adult size now, not like, not like massive, but they're, they're in catapult stage. They're more looking like what they're gonna look like when mature and i'm really excited to have like a little little new new influx of babies to to just like coddle and nurture okay last one after i filmed the last segment this plant i could not stop staring at like i was just so in awe of how beautiful this plant was and i was like saying to eric like more people need to know about this because it is so much more beautiful than i think photos depict that's not true <laughs> it looks really pretty in photos but i don't think people often talk about it so this is the um what he calls king crystallinum or minahasa so if you like really silver like brightly veined 
and theriums. This is definitely one to look at because it's not super, super expensive, but I want you guys to know how deliciously thick and just meaty this, this leaf texture is. Like it really just has a really nice substance to it. It doesn't have like a really soft, thin leaf. It actually is like velvety. And like the shape of it, it's like this like heart shape, but elongated, incredibly symmetrical. It kind of puffs out a little bit from the midrib and then rounds out at the leaf margin. Do you know what I mean? It's so, so pretty. And the new leaf has been trucking along slowly but surely. This one is the only other one I put in pawn and I don't see new root growth. The roots look just the same as before. There might be something happening right here, but remember like, I kind of buried the pond up to like, right up to the top of the stem. But yeah, I wanted to like focus a little bit on this plant because I need you guys to know how much I love it. I've seen this plant before a few times and I didn't really pay too much attention to it because there are so many like crystalline hybrids but like i said in indonesia <laughs> there are these little nuggets of flavor that are just like little zings that are like just super tasty and i didn't realize how much i was going to love this until i saw it in person and again it has like the little bits of silver like the little messy bits of silver look at this leaf it's so beautiful i need you guys to know how beautiful this is and i think this is one of like the most affordable um hybrids or i would probably assume this is like some sort of complex select crystallinum hybrid situation but this is one of like the most affordable that cartel has and he's propping this by cutting so every from what i understand every um, minahasa is going to be a clone of the other minahasas so highly highly recommend this one <laughs> you guys need to feel this in person get a friend <laughs> split it up something it is such a good plant this is like one of my new 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 favorites i'm so um excited i'm looking forward to when this gets bigger i'm hoping that it doesn't have a growth pattern like um other crystallinums where it <laughs> turns into helicopter i really hope it keeps a little bit more upright like this like my dark phoenix because i want it to live in the tent as long as possible especially throughout the winter this is the unexpected um star of this little group if you had like shown me a list of like these plants and asked me to pick, I would not have chosen this one, but in person. And it might just be because it's like the most mature of the bunch, but it is absolutely stunning. <laughs> I'm so in love with this plant. Eric, this is an amazing one. But yeah, overall, no, um, not a ton of root growth in, in the first week, but I can see like a couple, two or three of them have new roots like kind of pushing out from the stem. They obviously, you saw how great condition they came in. Cartel Dawn already has like an incredible reputation for quality and for shipping and just the, the health and quality of the plants that come in. They are a little bit more expensive, but when it comes to importing anthuriums, especially from Indonesia, you do kind of, not everyone does obviously, but a lot of people do um, prioritize knowing like the, accuracy of the ids and stuff and that's what you are going to get with cartel dawn and i'm just so so excited and grateful to be growing these new anthuriums huge huge thank you to eric and the cartel dawn team for sending me these plants i am so grateful and i'm so excited to be growing them i will be linking cartel dawn's instagram down below so right now his website is not available for ordering but if you want anything make sure to check on his stories because he's often posting sales bundles baby plants, seeds, and things like that. He does ship, again, to various parts of the world to um, importers there. So you don't necessarily need an uh, Indonesian import license. But right now, he's just taking orders via Instagram DM and WhatsApp. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and import update. If you have ordered from Cartel Dawn in the past, let me know what you have and feel free to Send me pictures. If you're on our Discord server, um, feel free to post it. I would love to see pictures of your plants. But anyway, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.